you are seeing small islands in the middle of the South China Sea. But the strange thing is that none of these islands existed just a few years ago. So the question arises? Who built these islands and, most importantly, why? Before we get to how China is secretly expanding its territory, we need to understand the conflict in the region. The South China Sea has been controversial for decades, starting in 1982 when the United Nations established the Law of the Sea, which regulates the international sea rights of the neighboring states. The sea is surrounded by the Gulf of Thailand. To the west, Borneo to the south, and the Philippines to the west. Since various nations border the sea, over six governments have claimed part of the Paracel and Spratly Islands. The treaty allowed multiple countries to use the area since all ships were granted the right to pass through the South China Sea no matter where they originally came from. However, the treaty did give certain privileges by creating exclusive economic zones for each nation involved, also known as EEZ. These zones determine where a country has over the natural resources below the sea's surface. The zone extends 200 miles off a nation's coast, but anything beyond that point is considered international waters. Many countries, including Indonesia and Vietnam, have their own EEZ in the sea. China has repeatedly broken these rules by encroaching on other nations' zones. It was even violated after China created the Haiyang Shiyu oil rig in Vietnam's EEZ in 2014. The Chinese government believes that the South China Sea ownership is crucial to protect the nation from foreign invaders, such as the United States. The military troops stationed on the islands would allow the government to keep watch for nuclear missile submarines. Plus, these troops could protect China from a potential attack on the mainland. China also uses the sea to transport millions of tons of goods, which is vital to international trade. A third of the global sea trade passes through this region yearly. The sea also holds a significant fish population, with over 3.7 million employed as fishermen on the waters. Compared to other fishing areas in Asia, significantly more fish is caught in the South China Sea. But the most significant controversy is the distribution of natural resources and marine minerals. For example, there is still an estimated amount of 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in the region. Compared to other areas in the world, definitely isn't the largest in absolute number. However, when we look at the amount per square kilometer, it quickly becomes apparent that there is still significant potential here. The Chinese government believes they have history on their side since China has been using the South China Sea since the Western Han Dynasty in 206 BC. The United Nations does not believe that the law of the sea should take history into account in this dispute, especially since the accuracy of China's historical claims is questionable. However, the country continues to rely on history to back up its ownership, including the unofficial demarcation of the Nine Dash Line. The line was originally an Eleven Dash Line formed in 1947 by Yang Wairin, a Chinese geographer. He drew a U-shaped line to separate the territory into two areas. One is owned by China and the other is owned by the neighboring countries. The line eventually turned into nine dashes instead of eleven but never became legally binding. Although most people see the line as meaningless in terms of international law, China still uses it to defend its supposed rights over the sea. The Spratly Islands are a particularly contentious area in the South China Sea. Located just above Malaysia, between the Philippines and Vietnam. All three of these countries, along with China, believe they are the rightful owners of at least part of the islands. Most of these nations want to extend their territory and perhaps their EEZ, which would only be possible through formal ownership. Vietnam and Malaysia have tried to submit claims to the United Nations to extend their EEZ farther than the 200-mile limit to have legal rights over a portion of the islands. But China has repeatedly protested these motions. Vietnam, China, and the Philippines have all built military facilities on the islands to exert their power. But China went even a step further by creating entirely new artificial islands. 
When Vietnam tried to take control of the Paracel Islands in 2009, China decided to fight back. The nation began to militarize the islands despite previous international agreements. In 2013, China started to take it way too far by building its own artificial islands in the South China Sea. Countries across the globe have shown their disapproval of this project. But the nation has continued to build on the water. Unfortunately for China, the islands have recently become unstable and are sinking into the sea. Surrounding countries were not too worried when China first started constructing these islands. The nation built seven islands near the Spratly Islands in 2016 and expanded into the Paracel Islands in 2017. The project only attracted international attention once China began to secretly build functional air and naval bases on the land. They also developed radar facilities and underground storage structures to hold weaponry. Over time, China has continued to build more and more on the island, hoping to eventually take complete ownership over significant areas of the contested Spratly Islands. To make the islands, China is building on top of existing structures. This can be anything from land, rocks, or coral reefs. For the islands to be strong enough to hold buildings and military bases. The construction workers dredge up additional sand from the ocean floor through tubes. The tubes carry the sand from the floor and stack it on top of the original formation. When that structure is strong enough, cement is placed on the sand to create a flat foundation for new buildings. The process is extremely harmful to marine life since it alters the sand on the ocean floor that sea creatures depend on. Dredging can also bring harmful and even toxic organisms into the oceans, ultimately destroying the ecosystems. Beijing claimed they would try to reverse the environmental damage that the construction caused, but some of the effects on marine life are likely irreversible. Despite all the insane work that China has put into building these islands, they are not turning out to be as successful as they hoped. Due to the tropical, humid climate, the infrastructure has completely deteriorated over time. The foundations have cracked underneath the pressure of the buildings on top, which has caused some of the islands to begin sinking into the sea. This will make it nearly impossible for the weakened islands to survive typhoon season. But China is not the only nation trying to secretly expand its territory. Beginning in 2015, Vietnam has been working on 10 new islands in the South China Sea. But compared to acres, China has artificially built 20 times the amount of land. The Vietnamese government claims that their choice to make their own islands is purely for self-defense and not to wage war. They hope this construction will show that Vietnam still wants some autonomy over part of the South China Sea. This could encourage the Chinese government to stop expanding into other nations' exclusive economic zones. Plus, by having people eventually live on these artificial islands, Vietnam wants to make it harder for China to capture them. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the following video.